Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, the experts from New Holland Agriculture are taking your calls on everything from hay cutting to equipment decisions. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen Live starts right now. And now, a live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. As we begin, uh, we want to take a moment to extend our deepest sympathies to our friends and family in Oklahoma that have been affected by this week's horrific storms. Here's how you can help. Text the words Red Cross to 90999 to donate $10 to the Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. Our prayers are with all our friends in Oklahoma tonight. And now let's return to tonight's live show and the topic at hand. We're taking your phone calls and here to answer them are the experts from New Holland Agriculture. Joining us in the studio are Abe Hughes. He's the vice president of New Holland North America. Michael Kornman. Michael serves as the manager of dairy and livestock marketing. And Kurt Hoffman. He's the Baylor marketing manager. Gentlemen, thanks for coming to the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Kevin. We're ready to take your calls. The number to call is 1-888-824-6688 or email your questions to c2c at beef.org. Well, let's get right to it. And Abe, I have a question to begin with you. Tell us just a little bit about the history and the heritage behind New Holland. Well, these are really exciting times for New Holland right now, but we have a rich history. We started in 1895 in New Holland, Pennsylvania, started by Abe Zimmerman. Mm. He got into frost-free engines, and then from there got into hay tools, and it's been history ever since. Mm. Uh, we have a legacy from Ford. You know, our blue color comes from Henry Ford's purchase of the company. Okay. And then, of course, we were the first to market the uh, self-propelled combine from Leon Clays and developed the first rotary combine out of Grand Island in 19. 1975. Wow. And then along the way, Fiat uh, purchased the company. So we have a rich legacy of, 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 of wonderful products and we're a leader in hay tools. And an exciting future. We really appreciate the commitment you've made to NCBA and the partnership you formed just over the last year. Tell us a little bit about that partnership. Well, as I said before, we're really leaders in the area of hay tools and have all kinds of experts in the field. And we want to share this knowledge with as many cattlemen as possible. So we formed a partnership with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association so we can do as much education as possible. We've had a big commitment to the convention this past year in Tampa. We've also been with the cattlemen in Washington, mm -hmm. uh, lobbying our senators and congressmen. So we have a strong immigration bill. Mm -hmm. So we get a farm bill back for, for the agricultural community. And we're going to have a lot more sessions like this one at Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Mm -hmm. It's all about education and trying to make the best forage possible uh, for their animals. Well, I'm anxious to get into some of that education just a little bit later as well. I've got a couple of questions, but first, sounds like we've got our first caller. Dan from South Dakota is calling in. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, hello. How are you tonight? I'm good, good. I have a uh, small operation. I have a couple of tractors, but I don't have any tractors with cabs. And I was looking to maybe upgrade to something that had a cab. And I was wondering what New Holland offered as far as the lines with cabs and what some of the options were with those. I saw some great tractors with cabs down at our convention this last year. And I was amazed at just not only how roomy they were, but the visibility uh, in, in those tractors. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. New Holland's tractor offering is very broad from starting with our T4 series around 60 horsepower on the way up to over 200 horsepower that uh, have cabs available that really would encourage uh, the caller to be able to check out his local New Holland dealer to be able to take a look at those tractors first and to be able to select a model that best fits his needs. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about some of the creature comforts in your in your cabs. You know the a lot of the cabs and even the design of the New Holland tractors really take the operator into account mm -hmm. looking at the placement of the controls and also making sure that there's uh, the cab provides excellent visibility to the tractor whether they're working in close quarters or want to have that visibility uh, for uh, being able to see the machine operate in the field. Very good. You know, Kristen is on the line. I believe Kristen's calling from Iowa. Kristen, go ahead with your question. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, what factors can influence your bale storage? 
bail storage. You know, uh, one thing I, I guess uh, occurred about getting hay put upright. It's another thing about how do you store it in a way that you don't waste hay. Uh, talk to us a little bit about bale storage. You bet, Kevin. <clears throat> One of the main things is uh, keeping water from ingressing back into that bale. And the storage site certainly influences that. Uh, if, if possible, it's best to store them on like a gravel surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, ideally, it'd be nice to st store everything in a building. Uh, net wrap also can help versus twine wrap. If you wrap with net, the bale is able to shed more of that water yeah. and prevent less of the water from wicking out of the ground. Very good. Some great, uh, great uh, haymaking tips. And uh, John, uh, I believe we've got uh, you on from, did I hear Kansas maybe? Yes, I'm from eastern Kansas and I've got a lot of hay fields that have a lot of rocks in them. Yeah. Thinking about buying a new mower conditioner. Uh, how are your mower conditioners uh, protected from rock damage? You know, I saw a couple things in, in one of the episodes that we did just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but Mark, you want to, uh, Mike, you want to handle that? Sure. Our disc mower conditioners have the Momax cutter bar yeah. design. And what that Momax cutter bar has is a shock hub protection system. So if it comes in contact with a foreign object, like uh -huh. the caller's describing in the field there, yeah. it's going to limit the damage to a, sp a specific area rather than affecting the whole cutter bar for the machine. Yeah. It's something that we've had in the marketplace for a number of years and really has, has uh, proven itself to be a good design and a, a great benefit to the operators. Yeah, it just makes so much sense. I mean, uh, those things are sometimes unavoidable issues and it just uh, really reduces the downtime. Uh, we go to Tennessee next. We're getting folks from all over the... Uh, Clint, uh, you're, you're calling from Tennessee. What's your question? Um. I saw at the beginning of the show that y'all had a square baler, but it had the rounded edges like a round baler. And I was wondering if, um, what, well, what gave y'all the idea to put the um, square baler, but making it look like a round baler? You know, there is, um, uh, I'm not sure, Kurt, you want to take that, but I would, I would even broaden the question to talk about some of the, the, the technology. When I was in uh, um, Florida, you know, uh, we were talking about RFID technology on bales. I had no idea you even had that technology. But, yeah, answer Clint's question and, and, and tell us a little bit about the technology, the innovations that you guys are bringing to the market at New Holland. You bet. Yeah, technology's changed quite a bit on the big square baler. Um, we now have smart fill indicators to help produce a square flake as, as well as the corners at the top to help eliminate the rounding edges. Gotcha. Which is brand new. Um, we also have a bale weight kit called Active Way. So hmm. we now can dynamically weigh the bales as they're coming out of the back of the baler. Really? Yes, you betcha. And uh, as long as you know moisture and you know bale weight, well, guess what you can calculate? You can calculate the dry matter tons that that field's putting out for you. On a real time basis. You betcha. That's amazing. Just to add to that, there with the new large square balers, yeah. that rounded design that the caller was referencing stuff with the improved styling really helps with the visibility to the baler, especially if they're transporting down the road oh. to be enabled from a safety perspective and take a look at that. That's something that was uh, factored in in that new big baler series of large squares. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I might want to add that that's one of the features of New Holland is that we're very innovative. We like to design yeah. smart products. Even in our tractors, you'll see that we've got some very innovative lighting technology. We have those cat eyes and yeah. the design of the hood. It's really about visibility. Yeah. Uh, and there's usually a reason for the designs that we've got. We like to take the extra step at New Holland in order to really get the right piece of equipment doing the right things for our farmers. Well, and just seemed, based on the machinery that I, I spent some time with, uh, in Florida there uh, at your display, it just seemed like there was a lot of those features that are just real intuitive features that if you right. if you grow up on a farm and you understand some of the challenges you face, you guys have kind of made some, some intuitive kind of pragmatic uh, improvements in the equipment that really are impressive. We, we like to say built New Holland smart. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Thad is calling from South Dakota. Uh, Thad, go ahead with your question. Good evening, guys. How are you? Good. Thanks for calling tonight. You bet. No problem. Say, uh, I have a question. I've got uh, I've got a round baler yep. that I currently use with, and, and round my bales with, with twine. Hmm. Um, I'm wondering uh, I've got some neighbors that uh, that use netting instead of the twine, and, and they tell me that it's faster to to use the netting instead. Any uh, any feedback on on that as to as to if that's better or or why that's better? Kurt, it looks like you have some opinions about that. So, Certainly. So tell us what those opinions are. <laughs> uh, your neighbor's right, Thad. Uh, <laughs> it takes about, on the average, about 30 to 33 seconds to wrap a bale with twine, depending really? on the number of wraps. 
and it would take about 10 seconds roughly in order to do it with net. So you're going to do a third more for sure with net wrap. Wow. As well as preserve more tons of hay once you've got it wrapped. So that was my question. I mean, what do you think the advantage is in just in, in terms of watershed and, and the ability to, to make better hay with net wrap? Yeah, you've got the, the speed basically, you know, on the day that you're making the hay, you've yeah. got better capabilities of shedding, you know, precip water. as well as water wicking out of the ground. Sure. We forget about water coming out of the ground, but that's is much uh, responsible for some of the damage as, as well as yeah, as precip. That's good to know. Uh, come to my home state of Colorado, and Al is uh, calling. Al, go ahead with your question. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Uh, I was at the NCBA trade show yep. in Tampa, yeah. and the New Holland presence there was just was fabulous, yeah. just really, really impressive, and just want to compliment the guys on that. Uh, but I also want to know what else we can expect from them in 2013, either in programs or machinery. Well, you created some excitement. I have to tell you, if I don't think your outdoor display would have been quite as effective a couple of years ago when we had it in Denver with, you know, negative 20 degree weather. But it was impressive. What can we expect from New Holland this next year? Well, there's much more to come. You've just seen the very beginning. That was our introduction. That was our launch. Mm -hmm. And it was you, you had to notice us in Tampa. But uh, expect more education, as I said for, at the very beginning. Uh, we are going to be sponsoring in the fall more of these cattlemen to cattlemen sessions uh, mm -hmm. featuring other aspects of uh, growing good forage mm -hmm. right and how to best use your equipment prepare your equipment for the winter uh, other things that you can expect is to support uh, Cattlemen's College uh, next uh uh, at the next convention in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a big support there for the Cattlemen's College. We, in fact, we spoke with a lot of the management today of, of NCBA about some of those plans. This summer, there's a, another session here in Denver. And again, we're going to put on a real nice evening event called um, Club Blue for the NCBA Cattlemen members. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just something, you know, we think that socialization and socializing networking is a really important aspect of, of cattlemen and to share stories, share techniques. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to sponsor one of the, the welcoming reception That's this neat. summer. So hope you can make it to Denver, Al. You're, you're yeah. nearby and we hope to meet you and see you there. Very good. I had a, a call or a, a email from Wisconsin, and I think it's an interesting one, just given how the year's shaping up. Um, they said we're getting a late start this season. Uh, what are some of the challenges? I mean, we've been cold, we've been damp. Uh, what challenges do you see, uh, Kurt, from a haymaking standpoint in a year like this? Uh, we've been getting a lot of calls on how to equip balers to um, handle wetter forages than we normally would see uh, this. Uh, time of the year. <clears throat> Everybody's in a hurry to make some forage because the hay cupboards are pretty empty as we all know yeah. stemming from the drought and then the later season. Um, we've been putting roller wind guards on balers to help feed the crop in better. Okay. A lot of interest in uh, crop cutting systems also really? because they're making more silage hay oh, yeah. and wanting to pack the, uh, the particles tighter to make better quality feed, more acid production with uh, less oxygen in that bale. Hmm. So yeah, did you have a comment? But not only for the, from an adjustments on the baling, but also whenever the the farmer is uh, mowing the hay, the settings of his conditioning roles in conditioning that crop is going to be very important and stuff. Being able to make sure that there's adequate roll pressure on that crop to be able to get a thorough conditioning across the full width, yeah. and then having those winter forming shields set out wide to be able to have that Spread drop that lay hay. down in in a uniform manner for that so that's Drawing. going to be important before the crops ready to be able to bail yeah makes a lot of, and i wouldn't mind getting back to some questions about conditioning a bit uh, uh, later we've got another caller though on the line uh, david is calling us from kentucky david go ahead with your question yes sir i've got a we've had a new i mean a matthew ferguson square beller and we've got a new holland hay beller and what the question is is what I've got friends that says you can bail your ram bales wet and wrap them in plastic. Is that a good idea thing? All right. Very good. So, so the question becomes, can you bail those round bales wet and wrap them in plastic and actually have some fermentation silage uh, created in that regard? Kurt? You certainly can. Uh, <clears throat> you need a silage special type baler, okay. which would have scrapers in strategic locations in the baler. I see. Um, you would uh, also prefer to cut that crop to make the crop particles fit together better for better fermentation, but that's a very common practice, especially in cooler seasons and uh, yeah. also cooler springs like we've had. Yeah, make some good hay. Ricky is uh, calling us from Louisiana, talking about uh, wet uh, wet hay and wet conditions. Uh, Ricky, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm calling about a 7060 Bella. I bought it uh, about a month ago, and, and I just started using it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm having a problem with uh, the tie arms accumulating hay where the arms don't drop down all the way. They start tying in the center. And uh, I'm leaving about 10 to 12 to 5 percent of the bale that's not being tied so I can clean it. And also on, um, on the camp, on the right-hand side of the bale where, where your cam is and where it trips the bit more, it's accumulating a lot of heat right there, and uh, it's stopping the camp from uh, tripping. And I've had a new automobile, and I've never had that problem. I wonder what, it, what we can do to solve that problem. You're wondering what you can do to solve that problem. Kurt, it's tough to do that diagnostically over the phone, but do you have some suggestions uh, uh, for Ricky? Well, I'd just like to say, first yeah, of all, for number one, I want to just say thank you for the business. Yes. Uh, so thank you for purchasing our baler. And uh, I think this is a great moment to talk about our dealer network oh, and yeah. to uh, you know, obviously you want to be working really tightly with your dealer at this point. Our dealers out there, we've got about over a thousand of them throughout U.S., Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, they're experts in hay, every single one of them. And so I'd encourage um, the caller to, you know, get over and see them. We've got hay experts throughout, sure. you know, North America. They, they can go out there and give some, some personal advice. And uh, it sounds to me it's like some fine tuning. Uh, Let's get some insight from the guys here. Yeah. Sure. Any other thoughts that you had, Kurt? Be good to get a dealer out there to take a look at that to see whether that's more of a mechanical issue or whether it's a crop-induced issue. Very good. It's very hard to tell over the phone. Yeah, different yeah. diagnostic. Well, thank you for the perspective. We're waiting to hear from you. Just give us a call and ask the experts your question. The number to dial is 1-888-824-6688. Or again, you can email us, as some of the folks are doing, at c 2 c at beef.org. And don't forget, it's a great time to join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's easy to do, and we're waiting to hear from you. Plus, we'll tell you about New Holland member incentives, up to $3,500 off some of your favorite New Holland equipment. Plus, join now, and you'll get a free New Holland Haymakers Handbook. Again, that number to join is 1-866-USA-BEEF. Stay with us. We'll be right back. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. And New Holland round balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland round balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. There's an easier way to help protect your horse from West Nile virus. West Nile Innovator. No other vaccine has helped protect more horses. Talk to your veterinarian today. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breed back rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Yeah. 
edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Call us now at 1-866-USA-BEEF to join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. As a member, you're eligible for many discounts on some of the most popular New Holland equipment. And join now to also get a free copy of the New Holland Haymakers Handbook. You'll enjoy that. Again, call 1-866-USA-BEEF. And we're talking with the experts from New Holland Agriculture tonight. Let's get right back to it. And Mike, I had a question that I wanted to start with you. As cattlemen, we depend a lot on some workhorse 60 to 100 horsepower kind of tractors. Tell us what New Holland has to offer in that 60 to 100 horsepower tractor series. We just launched our new T4 and T5 series utility tractors. They span from 90 to 100 horsepower, basically. Mm -hmm. And they really will fit in well on the farm, whether it's moving bales or operate in a mower conditioner or a baler, a tractor that's really designed to be able to be in, put it to its task in the field for a haymaking exercise. Yeah, they're great looking tractors. And uh, get back to haymaking for just a moment, uh, Kurt. Uh, you know, we have paid some ex extraordinarily high prices for hay this last year. I mean, we, we've been in Colorado here, this droughted area, like so many people. And, uh, and, and it's really put a point on how important not only quantity, but also quality is in terms of hay. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how New Holland can help us maximize both quantity and quality. We have a host of different things. Uh, <clears throat> if you start with the mower conditioner, we have something called wide thin fins, okay. which allow us to spread the crop out full width of the cutter bar, making it nice and thin. Better uh, for the surface area for the sun and the wind to work the, the wick the moisture away. And then when it comes to the baler, we have things like crop preservatives. Uh, crop Saver is an excellent product to opening, open that baling window up. You know, normally we can bale up to about 15% moisture on the average with a small square baler or a round baler, about 13, 14 with a big square baler. But this product opens that baling window up all the way to 28%. So if you've got some overcast days, sure. just cooler weather in general, that's an excellent product that can be added actually to just about any small square baler, round baler, and large square baler that's out there. It's outstanding. You know, we're glad to take your calls tonight, and this is your opportunity to ask the experts from New Holland any of your questions. The number to call is 1-888-824-6688, or again, just email us your question at c 2 c at beef.org. And if we get back, uh, as we get back on the, on the phone lines, we have uh, Roger, who called in from Florida. Roger, you still with us? You bet. Thanks for calling. Oh, thank you. Uh... My question is, is in all my life, I don't think I've ever seen a large square baler here in North Florida. Is there a reason for that? Is it our forage or what's the it's a great, this great question. You know, we, we have moved, of course, a big dairy country up here, and you see a lot more large square balers than you do round balers up in northern Colorado here. What, how would you respond to, to Roger's question? There's a, various reasons. Um, Balers, um, the large square balers are a larger investment. They're about three times the investment. For one thing, they require a larger horsepower tractor. Uh, and then also, um, hot or humid conditions make it a little harder to use a big square baler. I mean, we have crop preservative, like I had mentioned sure. earlier, um, but it is more costly to produce hay using a crop preservative. Um, and that's the majority of the reasons why we don't see uh, big balers so much in the southeastern United States. Mm -hmm. They're more prevalent in the upper Midwest as well as the western United States. Yeah. But they're also, hey, yeah. if I can add a couple comments, sure, are they're really taken off in terms of providing the operators the ability to be able to continuously bale. They don't yeah. have to stop and wrap a bale like the round baler. And then it, for those producers that are actually selling hay right. or trucking hay, we all know that they stack better on a semi to be able to go down the road. And that's probably where we've seen more shift from a, a round baler to a, a large square baler owner. Yeah, and that was my question. I mean, this year we saw hay being transported further than we've seen in a long time. And, and clearly the opportunity to put big squares on a semi uh, makes it a lot more affordable and cost effective if you're trucking that very far than round bales. So, mm -hmm. so maybe the tide is turning in that regard. Abe, did you have a comment? Yeah, the only thing I'd just like to add is that who typically uses this uh, large square baler is yeah. the professional haymaker. Sure. So in those areas of the country where, you know, you're really making, you know, thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of bales and you're exporting that to China or to Japan, or you're tr trucking this around. It's it's that kind of producer that's going to produce that sure. kind of hay. Yeah. Uh, some of it's cultural. You know, yeah. there's there's a yeah. phenomenon, for example, in the Southwest where people like to use a three tie baler. Right. Uh, it's the only part of the country where they use a yeah. three tie, and so we've even got a three tie baler to satisfy that 
that market. I, I was in Yuma, Arizona about three weeks ago, and they were calling me a pansy because we just had two tie bailers. They don't think we're <laughs> tough go. enough to handle those big three tie bales. Uh, Rich, uh, I believe, is calling us from Washington. Rich, go ahead with your question. Yeah, thanks for taking my call, Kevin. I was giving you a call because uh, I've got an old uh, side, po side pole disc bind, and I'm looking at replacing it. I wonder if you might be able to talk to me about the advantages of a center pole. That's what I'm kind of being pushed towards. And I uh, hope you might be able to tell me about some of the, the features of that and, and why I might buy that over the side pole. I've seen some of the videos. Do you want to take that, Michael, and sure. tell us a little bit about that? As the cutting widths increase mm -hmm. in the overall size, the need for more maneuverability comes, and that's really where the center pivot design excels. For example, our 7450 model disc motor conditioner cuts 13 feet. Mm. And to be able to have a, a center pivot design, it allows the operator to be able to maneuver from the right to left hand side. So they're more efficient going back and forth in the field rather than cutting in a clockwise uh, or counterclockwise position uh, going around the field. So it really comes down to maneuverability, yep. especially in wider machines. And that's the, that's the reason for the center pivot design. And did I see some of the, the kind of the bent uh, draw bars and stuff? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for uh, added maneuverability on the side pool disc motor conditioners, we've added swivel hitches to right. our offerings. And that allows the operator to be even turn even sharper as he needs to for adjustments in his smaller fields or tighter turning conditions and stuff. But again, that's probably in that 10 foot and less, less from a sure. width of cut. Yeah. You know, I just add that uh, I would highly encourage the caller to visit the local New Holland yeah. dealer there. You'll, you'll be surprised at how easy these dealers are to work with, how, yeah. how knowledgeable they are about yeah. hay in particular, because that's our thing yeah. at New Holland. That's our main plate business. And, you know, you'd be surprised. They'll let them demo the, yeah. the, the unit, and, and, and really I think we can get them into one of these as, a lot easier than he thinks. Yeah. Wonderful financing programs that we've got right now. And great incentives. As and we great talked incentives. About. <laughs> you know, there's so many things going on. Yeah. We have zero to 60% financing through yeah. our capital arm. They've got the NCBA deal. Right. We have a friends and family discount. There's countless ways that this would be a great time yeah. to get out there and replace that disc mine. Yeah, if he's, uh, if he's thinking about it, uh, there's probably no better opportunity than now. That's, That's great. Right. Let's go to Tennessee. I believe Tommy is calling us from Tennessee. Tommy, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, I just completed the purchase this morning of a new, uh, new to me, new T5050. Okay. And uh, took advantage of my NCBA uh, discount, which okay. I really appreciated. Yeah. Uh, I wish that they would talk just a little bit and compare and contrast the T5000 series to the new T5 series and, and why that change was made and what the difference in those tractors are. Very good. Well, you want to talk sure. that, Mike? Well, let me start off by saying thank you for the purchase yeah, great. of the new Holland tractor, the T5050. Really, with the new T5 series, those tractors feature a Tier 4 emissions engine. Uh, okay. As we move up in horsepower in these to be able to comply with emissions uh, going forth from manufacturing and stuff, we're going to a Tier 4 design. And that's what you'll find in the new T5 series mm -hmm. versus the prior T5000 series of uh, similar horsepower, similar options from an offering standpoint and everything, but really just kind of advancing that to the next level when it comes to engine technology. So did Tommy make a good decision? He did. <laughs> and uh, taking a look at that, the yeah. T5000s are a great tractor. Yeah, we've good. even yeah. got an improved cab on that tractor as oh. well, I would add. And mm -hmm. so he's going to get a lot more creature comforts in that cab than he would have from before. That's good. And so that's another upgrade that we were able to do when we went to that Tier 4 emissions. That's great. We'll head to Arkansas and uh, take a call from Tim. Tim, thank you for calling tonight. Hey, I appreciate, uh, appreciate y'all's program. You bet. Thanks for watching. Hey, uh, my question is about hay moisture. It, uh, everybody, you know, I don't really know. I've never had a moisture probe on a hay baler. Looks like it would come uh, standard on all the hay balers. But, uh, you know, uh, we never really achieved the idea of moisture. Uh, but at what moisture uh, uh, content do you think that the hay will spoil without kind of additive on it? Uh, and, hey, if it was a standard probe on there, we could uh, we could kind of uh, monitor, and trial and error would tell, tell us when it was getting too high. That's all I was asking. Yeah, so it sounds like a couple of questions, uh, and Kurt, I'll have you take it. What is the right moisture? Uh, and secondly, what would be difficult, or why not put uh, some sort of a hay probe as, as a more standard feature on balers? Sure. <clears throat> For a small score baler, ideal moisture is going to be that 13 to 15 percent. 
You certainly wouldn't want to be over 16 because that's when you can get some molding in the middle of the bales. Um, there are uh, systems out there and we do have a, a, a moisture system that actually you cut a hole in the side of the chamber and you actually put a uh, probe in the side of the chamber. Mm -hmm. It's two carriage bolts that measure uh, the moisture as the hay comes out of the back of the baler. Mm -hmm. You can set the baler up to just measure moisture. If you want to go one step further, you can actually buy a crop saver system for that small square baler. Mm. You get moisture as well as the ability to put a crop preservative on to sure. open that window up so that you can bale successfully oh, yeah. at 15, 18, even up to as high as 28%. Gotcha. And, and again, they can, they can uh, talk to the local dealer and get them all set up, uh, situated with these, uh, these additional add-on features. Mm -hmm. That's yep. right. Michael? Yep. yep. Some of those options, like, uh, like I was going to say, as you had stated there, was see their local New Holland dealer to be able to help with that installation and also the guidance on what is ne needed for their baler to be able to take a look at it. Well, speaking of New Holland, we have a caller calling us from Pennsylvania. I don't know if it's close to New Holland or not. Sam, where are you from? Well, we're about an hour and a half from Pennsylvania, uh, from New Holland. Very good. Well, thanks for calling tonight. Uh, you're well aware of these folks. Uh, what's your question? I have an old 850 New Holland baler. I've got some age on it. It's in good shape. It's always kept in. But when I tie, it has the hand arm tie. Uh, when you use heavy twine, it'll cut. When you use lighter twine, it doesn't cut. Hmm. When you use like the 20,000, the lighter stuff, it doesn't cut very good. What are your suggestions, Kurt? That has a, a striker plate that the knife comes down against <clears throat> and it comes in at an angle like this. Hmm. And so basically, if the twine has put a groove in the knife itself, hmm. it doesn't press tight enough against the striker plate to actually cause it to cut. So I would first look for grooves. I'd also see if I could take, if there's no groove, I take that knife off and you can touch those knives up with a grinder oh. uh, really lightly and uh, I think you'll be back in business uh, because it should cut uh, smaller diameter twine just as easily as large diameter twine. Very good. Or if all else fails, just go and buy a new baler, right? <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can help him out with that as well. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, who, who needs a grinder when you can buy a new baler? Uh, we'll head to Todd uh, from California. Todd, go ahead with your question. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Great to see you guys on tonight. My question is about more of a multi-use baler for putting up alfalfa as well as some uh, native grasses. Sure. Yeah, so, so, so as you think about uh, folks that are, again, looking, baling, you know, multiple uh, crops, uh, including uh, some crop residue, but it sounds like both alfalfa as, as well as some native grasses, what might you recommend to Todd? A uh, round baler would be the, the uh, recommended baler. Um, didn't uh, know what weights he could handle as far as the equipment, but um, a four by five size bale or a five by six size bale, depending upon uh, what market you're in and the, you know the machine you have to pick the bales up, are the two most common. Gotcha. Uh, I would be uh, looking at a machine with a roller wind guard, as mm -hmm. we've talked about before, that gives you about another mile an hour uh, more capacity. Mm -hmm. I would look at endless belts. Endless belts are about 10 times uh, stronger than what a laced belt would be. Really? So longevity, cost of ownership, endless belts uh, carry a three or 15,000 bale warranty. They're definitely the way to go. That's great. Boy, some great insight. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for responding to these questions. And there's some great questions. Again, we're taking your calls live tonight. Give us a ring at 1-888-824-6688 or email us your question at c2c at beef.org. And we're asking you to join us as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Call us now at 1-866-USA-BEEF. There are special incentives for NCBA members as much as $3,500 off some of your favorite New Holland equipment. Plus, by joining now, you'll also get that free copy of the Haymakers Handbook I've been talking about. Call us now at 1-866-USA-BEEF. We'll be right back. New Holland equipment is built smart for the way you farm. And the T6 Series tractors from New Holland are the ideal mid-range tractors for cattlemen. Whether your job is loader work, operating hay equipment, moving round bales, or pulling a mixer wagon, the T6 provides power and performance with optimal comfort. Choose from three four-cylinder and three six-cylinder models with the right combination of transmission, hydraulic, and cab options to fit specific haying or row crop applications. And T6 engines are tier four 
4A emissions compliant, featuring New Holland's exclusive EcoBlue technology. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all of the benefits available to cattle producers. I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Respiratory disease is a significant animal health issue in the beef industry. It costs producers nearly a billion dollars in lost profits each year, and it's the most prevalent disease in calves older than 30 days. So why not prevent respiratory disease before it steals from your bottom line? Vista Once protects your calves with the most complete respiratory disease coverage available, and Vision Blackleg vaccines can add 14 pounds per calf at weaning. For further information, contact your local veterinarian or animal health supplier. This is yours, and so is what grows there. Not theirs, or theirs, yours. You need this to fight this, and this to grow more this. Because the more of this you feed them, the less this you spend on that, which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. Welcome back to this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's a great time to join the oldest and largest organization representing our nation's cattlemen. Give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF to become a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Well, let's get back to the questions, and Mike, I want to start with you. There's a lot of producers that have either uh, started with their first cutting hay or, or about to start. Uh, do you have some specific questions specifically around cut quality and conditioning and how producers can improve both cut quality and conditioning of their hay? Sure. The highest quality hay starts at the time that it's cut, and that's really important. And realize that it's wetter, cooler conditions are making it challenging for the producers. Mm -hmm. But making sure that their equipment is ready to go to the field and especially that mower conditioner, whether the knives are sharp, the conditioning rolls are adjusted properly to be able to, to get a good effective conditioning, and then also how that crop is discharged from the machine. Mm -hmm. By set, opening up those windrow shields to be able to lay out a wide, even windrow for uh, consistent dry down is very important, gotcha. uh, especially in these wetter conditions and taking a look at that. But really, to be able to save time in the field, make sure that that machine's ready yeah. for this uh, cutting. Yeah, we hate to complain about moisture after going through this drought, but now about the time uh, we, we get some hay, we, we also want to get it put upright, so that's helpful to know. Kurt, let's talk about this big square baler. A couple of people have referenced it uh, on their call-ins. You've just launched this new big square baler this year. Tell us a little bit about it, and I want to ask the question, is it truly smarter and faster like you guys project? Yes and yes. Okay. <clears throat> we, uh, we've moved up from 42 strokes a minute to 48 strokes a minute. Okay. And we've optimized flow through uh, the machine. And how we did that is we came up with a brand new pickup called an Active Sweep Pickup. It has some very innovative features in it. Uh, the side sheets are specially shaped with an S profile to allow crop to enter from the sides. And one of my favorite uh, ways to demonstrate this new product is to take it out in a hay field. Just to show people what it can do, you just drive a circle in a hay field. You can enter windrows from the side, from the front. The pickup is uh, as close to a row insensitive pickup as I've ever seen in the marketplace. So it's wow. a nice machine. That's really good. And Mike, back to you. Uh, you know, a lot of our producers, a lot of cattlemen uh, put up a lot of hay. And, and in some cases, they put it up commercially. They're looking for faster ways to get that hay cut. How can New Holland help? Well, New Holland has a broad offering of mower conditioners, whether it be our hay binds that range anywhere from 7 to 18 feet in width of cut, as well as a full line of disc mower conditioners. But something brand new that we introduced is our mega cutter. Mm -hmm. It's actually a mounted disc mower conditioner that allows the operator to utilize a high horsepower tractor, such as our T7 or our T8 series tractors, and be able to cut 30 feet of hay in one pass, mm -hmm. but yet fold up to be able to be uh, 10, 11 feet going down the road, transporting very narrow, and utilize that large tractor on a year-round basis on that's their a, farm or ranch. Absolutely, that's a great idea. We're still standing by, ready to take your calls to ask the New Holland experts any of your questions. Again, just a few more minutes to call 1-888-824-6688 or email us your question at c2c 
at beef.org. And as we return to the phones, I'm told we have a caller from Vermont. Gaston, is that your name? Yes, it is, sir. Thank you so much for calling. What's your question? Um, I actually don't have a question. I just wanted to um, appreciate you guys and what you guys do mm. for business. Um, me and my father actually purchased two H7550 two-point hitch, 13-foot cut disc binds <clears throat> last spring. Oh, yeah. And we got to mow, we put up about 3,000 bales a year. Mm -hmm. And we have a really short growing season here for grass. So um, we really appreciate the way they maneuverability in the field mm -hmm. and the way they work, the land. And um, we really like, especially the Momax cutter bar system for mm -hmm. rocks. They work wicked good. <laughs> I like that. And um, uh, just that's what I wanted to say. Are you interested in a job? It sounds like you've got a salesman on the phone. You might want to hire this guy, Abe. Well, I think well, I've seen you say that. Yeah. Gaston, thank you very much for your purchases. A couple things. Yeah, we're always looking for great people. Yeah. I definitely don't want to take you off the farm. Sounds like you love what you're doing. Yeah. But we're always looking for good people, yeah. Kevin. And I just want to make sure I, I say that... Uh, uh, folks that are interested in agriculture, interested in particular hay tools, have yeah. a knack for this. They love to dabble. They'd like to be part of our team. I'd always like to bring great energetic people on our team. Uh, for Gaston, another thing to think about would be, you know, we've got skid steer loaders now in our arsenal. Oh. You know, New Holland Construction is sure. part of New Holland Agriculture. <laughs> and we have skid steers. He might have use for those on the farm as well. Yeah. Some of Mike's new mid-range tractors or maybe that mega cutter. But we've got, always got new things that, you know, perhaps you might want to think about uh, considering for his farm. Again, thanks for the business. Yeah, that's a, that's a great compliment. And, you know, just to follow up on that, I, I have noticed the people that I've met uh, with, with your organization, they just have a genuine passion for farming. I mean, I just get the sense that so many of you were born and raised in, in, in farms and ranches across this country and have a pragmatic look at, at uh, you know, how this equipment is used. And I just really compliment you on the, the team that you are assembling, Abe. Let's go to uh, Missouri, and we've got a call from Owen. Owen, go ahead. Yes, I've got a uh, BR7090 Baylor, and the book calls for 80 horse with an 86 horse tractor. Uh, you know, Owen, can you step away from your television just a little bit or turn that down? And uh, you, 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 you're you cutting out a little bit on the show here. So you've got a Baylor, and, and, and tell us more about what we, we lost you after that. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling it with an 86 horse tractor, and that seems to have all it wants just to pull it. Uh, what horsepower do you recommend for that BR7090? It depends a little bit on topography uh, and how fast you want to bale. Uh, 86 horse is going to be right there at the minimum. Ideally, when you go to purchase a new tractor, assuming you're looking at a new one, uh, you'd want to shoot for around 110, 115 horse. Very good. That's a great question. We'll go to Virginia next. It sounds like we've got a caller. Uh, Jack is calling us. Jack, uh, how's it going tonight? Hey, doing good. Welcome to Virginia, I guess, for at least a minute. Good to be with you all. Yeah, are you going to make some hay back there this year? We're going to do what we can. I tell you, one of my questions that yeah. I always have a little frustration with, it's been, you know, we've been caught up in the drought as much as anybody, at least uh, at least where I'm sitting. And I always look at uh, those alfalfa fields, and I'm always worried about, uh, about taking a rake to them for fear of losing leaves. Please. And I was wondering if New Holland might have a, might have a little bit of a solution on that. I've seen that happen too. You know, you go through all the effort to grow good hay, and, and then somebody's out there raking in the middle of the day and leaves flying all over, and you got nothing but stems left. Uh, what might you recommend, Mike? Sure. Uh, really, it comes down to making sure that the hay is at the right moisture whenever you're bringing that together in a windrow and stuff. Once it gets too dry, then uh, you're going to have more leaf shatter and leaf loss for that. Now, certainly, there's a difference in rakes, whether it be a rotary rake versus a wheel rake and being able to be gentle on that crop as it's moving into the windrow formation and prepping it for the use of the baler and taking a look at it. One of the things that you can do if you have a rotary rake is slow the PTO speed down okay. to try and save the leaves. If it's July or August and we've got really dry ground conditions, low humidity, uh, going out there in the morning when there's some dew yeah. and raking is, a, is an awesome thing to save the leaves yeah. as well. Yeah. And then the other thing that you can do is on the baler, whatever baler is going to bale this crop, if you put your crop saver system on there, you open up that window of baling so that you can bale at a higher moisture. You don't have to get it all the way down to 9 or 10 or 11 or 12. You can be up there at 18, 19 yeah. 
then you harvest more dry matter tons, more of those leaves. Yeah, that's, that's what a lot of guys do in our area is we just bail in a little wetter with, with, with a crop saver time of system. Um, we'll, we'll head to the northwest. Cole is calling us from Washington. Cole, go ahead. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? Good. How are you tonight? Good. Um, I gotta have to say, my question is, uh, we just um, harvested our uh, triticale silage, and uh, we had a big windstorm go through here in Washington and blew all of our triticale down. And I was just wondering mm. if New Holland had any new technologies on their swathers that could get some of that tall, rank triticale to get swathed in the perfect windrow. So, how do you get it picked back up and put it in windrow uh, when you got a weather event like that? Well, one thing with our one our swathers and our self-propelled windrowers is really to be able to adjust the cutter bar speed and being able to to vary that speed uh, for those crop conditions and stuff. Certainly, the cutting angle mm -hmm. helps in those down and tangled crops and conditions if it's uh, wind blown. From that standpoint, to be able to vary the cutter bar angle mm -hmm. to be able to cut it closer and help with the crop feeding and taking a look at that. Gotcha. Yeah, great questions. Go ahead, Kurt. We also have a little bit of new technology in the knife area where we have serrated knives also okay. that are available besides the 7 degree and the 14 degree twist. The 14 degree twist is what we put on standard, but if they go see their local New Holland dealer, they can purchase serrated knives, hmm. which of course have little bumps on the end. They self-sharpen a little better, and uh, that helps that crop from sliding off the end of the knife. So that'd be another opportunity that That's they could improve suggestion. cut quality. Oh, this is, this is fantastic. Uh, we'll head to Illinois. We've got callers calling in from all over. Rod, you're on the line. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I was wondering if, if you could add a net wrap to an old 855 round baler. I've got an 855 round baler, and I'd like to net wrap my hay. I didn't know if I had to buy a different baler, if it's cost effective to add the net wrap to that old baler. By looks, by looks of, uh, of your reaction, it doesn't sound like that's a possibility, Kurt. No, no unfortunately, we can't um, <clears throat> add net after the fact. Uh, we would, the only option there would be to trade into a different baler. But you, based on your earlier discussion, you would recommend net wrapping? Uh, for sure, yeah. over twine. Uh, again, you get a third more productivity out of your investment instantaneously. You save more dry matter tons by wrapping with net when you store outside. That's great. Thank you so much for this insight. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is so happy to have New Holland as our partner. And if you join NCBA now, you can get some special incentives on your favorite New Holland equipment. Plus, get that free copy of New Holland's Haymakers Handbook. Join NCBA today. Give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF. We're standing by to take your call right now. And we'll be right back. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. And New Holland round balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland round balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute, or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Ben Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Ben Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, built cattlemen tough. 
Welcome back. As we wrap up this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we're going to get a few final thoughts from our New Holland friends. Kurt, let's start with you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, this year seems like it's going to be a challenging year from a moisture standpoint. And uh, the large square baler, for instance, would have some features on it that allow it to take on those challenges. They all come silage ready from the factory. There's a choice of single axle versus tandem axle. Tandem axle would give you better flotation in these wetter conditions. We also have some other commercial hay tools like self-propelled forage harvesters with some new smart technology on them like autofill for the spout. Mm -hmm. You can focus on steering the machine, getting the crop in the machine. The spout does the filling for you in the truck actually. So it's very good. And and Mike, yeah, what might you add? In addition to our hay tools, we also have several new series of tractors that I would encourage the viewers to be able to stop in at our local New Holland dealership and check out that line, whether it's the T4 or the T5 series utility tractors, or we get into the larger tractors like the TS6 and the T6 are really suited around a cattleman's, per, a cattleman's needs. Very good. Abe, what would you share with our viewers? Well, I'd just like to say thank you for having us here, and I want to thank all the cattlemen for being such loyal followers of New Holland over the years. So for all the cattlemen that you know have equipment that might be getting a little bit dated, I'm going to just remind them once again, with the membership with NCBA, there's not a better time to get out there and get up to $3,500 off uh, to replenish the whole fleet of hay tool equipment and possibly even tractors. It's a great time. We thank you for your business. We encourage you to check out New Holland at your local dealer. Couldn't agree more. And for more information on New Holland's full line of products, visit newholland.com slash NA or check us out at cattlemanandcattlemen.org. Now, before we leave, we want to extend a special thank you to Melissa. Melissa is producing her final show here at Cattlemen to Cattlemen and moving on to a new chapter in life from all of us at Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thank you, Melissa Brandon. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD. TV.